Okay. peeps uh here we go so i did a ton of research on how to hook my breaker box up to the generator and there's a million videos out there but they really didn't kind of explain a couple things which i'm going to make really clear for you guys okay now i have two separate breaker boxes so your mileage may vary mine main breaker and the fan breaker is outside whereas i have the house breakers inside the garage so as you see from my general design is going to be this this is the outside breaker right this is my main breaker this is a fan breaker and there's an open slot here. That's where I'm gonna put the 50 amp breaker into here. Punch out a hole here to get these wires in. Punch out a hole to get this in. Typical uh, electrician 101. Now, as always, when working with anything, turn the main breaker off before you do a damn thing. Treat this as hot or die. Your call. You know, hey, you will die if you touch a 50 amp breaker, hot. End of story. Turn your main breaker off, guys. Don't be stupid. Okay, now, with the breaker off, what I did was pull, okay, let's not lie, I went down there and I found out there's a different hundred different kinds of breakers. So I came back, I pulled this 30 amp breaker from my fan to see what kind of breakers. There's a hundred of different kinds of breakers, guys. If possible, pull one of your breakers, take a picture of it so you can see the feet or the claws on the bottom. That will save a big amount of trouble. Okay, blah, blah. I inserted the 50 amp breaker into my breaker box outside I bought a utility box that has the little lid that opens up, but anyway, and I put the female adapter into here that came with it. It's about 60 bucks. Now, eight gauge wire, okay? You need some pretty hefty wire to hold that 50 amp current. The eight gauge worked just perfectly for me. All right, so once I uh, connected those wires up with my breaker and got the plug going, I'll show you this $115 cable I got that has the right ends for this box and the right end for the generator. So that was a whole deal. Now, FPNL is out here providing power into this box, right? So now, this is FPNL. This is my Florida Power and Light. I am the utility company. Same thing, I'm putting power into that box. It's kind of an interesting concept, but it's that simple. Okay, now. I'll show you this in the video in a little bit, but I bought three separate wires, green, black, red, and white. Ended up not needing the white for my configuration. So put the breaker in, the red and the black, which are hot, I put it back here, and the green I put to the negative bar. Uh, a lot easier said than done, uh, but again, make sure, white people, your power is off, because you're dealing with a billion volts here at AMP, so just kick your ass, all right? Okay, now the second page let's go in a little bit more in depth boy you can't get this one you want to can you ah sorry I gotta lick my finger okay let's take a look at this in the bigger scheme of thing how my house does it Florida power and light comes into my box there's a main breaker which what do we do troops turn that damn thing off and we have the generator breaker I pulled in here I got my 50 amp plug here now, the outside breaker box has junctions, which the two heavy uh, gauge wires come in and feed the right and the left side of the panel of the house breakers, right? This is one leg, this is the other leg. Now, what I ended up doing was uh, turning off each switch because these were not labeled. And what I did to make it easy, the ones I wanted to have on the breaker, so when the power goes out, how I know which one, I would put a little circle by the breaker, okay? This little guy here so i knew that he was like the lights and this was like the refrigerator not necessarily the water heater and the dishwasher those things you don't want on during a hurricane right so supplying once the main breaker is off and fpl nails is out of the picture there is that interlock switch that you have in here i did i was rushed didn't have time to do it but just have common sense to turn this puppy off now the generator breaker is getting power from my generator, 50 amp breaker here, 50 amp breaker here, okay? So coming power through here, it goes straight across to those two legs and lights up and energizes both sides of my panel. I was able to put everything in the house on. All right, let's go a couple of rules. The generator, that main breaker, cannot be on at the same time. 
That's what the interlock switch is for. I'll be getting that. You will electrocute somebody. If you're having power go in because the power will go back out to fp and L and fry some guy out there on the utility pole. Don't be a murderer, okay? Never have these two on. After the hurricane was over, shut this guy off. Turn this guy back on. Make sense? Okay. You can never have them on at the same time. Interlock switch. Now, what was really mystifying to me was, will that generator energize both sides of that breaker panel? In this configuration, yes, it will. But from everything I understand, if you come in from that suicide connection to your dryer and you bring a breaker in here, yes, it will energize the panel. But again, for my breaker setup, this is what I did. All right, guys, it was that simple. Put a breaker in, run the switch wires. This part was very easy. Plug that, this was expensive, ka -ching. And this is why I want to make a new one because this guy is freaking a lot of money, okay? $2 a foot, I can do this at Home Depot and run it a lot better next time. All right, with that, that's the configuration. Now save yourself a lot of time. Take a breaker out. Take it to Home Depot with you. This will save so much time and trips back and forth. Okay, now what I'm doing is wiring my outdoor receptacle. Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, this is 8 gauge wire. Uh, the directions tell you what to do for the reliance control. Pretty cut and dry. So with that, all you have to do basically is unscrew that oops unscrew that screw a little bit and then that opens a cup in there and then you just you know cut a, about uh, you know five eighths of an inch off half an inch off and tighten them down so now what I'm gonna do is go out to my breaker box and look at my punch out holes and see what I gotta do to get this guy mounted that's the big fun okay at this point I've got my 50 amp breaker on the right um, tiny breaker box I know all right, I just knocked out that hole. Plan is take this guy, mount him around this area and try not to drill into my 20 hot wires. As you notice, my breaker box is off. The master breaker is off. Still treating it as though this is hot. All right, so I'm gonna route some wires. Alrighty, so I've got this mounted in now. You can see, that's the only screws I had. I'll get those taped off, cut off or something. I know it's not safe, I'll get it covered. And now, connect that little ground wire there that keeps popping off. And we'll be breaking it up soon here. Okay, this is the infamous $120 electrical cord that goes from my uh, outside uh, plug to my generator. So, besides being about as thick as my arm, <laughs> that's the connector you see on this side. That three prong with a pin to center it in. This thing is so honking big. And that is almost your standard dryer plug. But plugs vary. So that's that side. This guy is about, I'll say an inch around. Incredibly honking expensive and heavy. I'm going to make my own next time. It's $2 a foot at Home Depot. And the connectors came actually with the generator. Not hard to do at all. So there it is, $115. Two, three. Whoa, it's alive! 